Aaron, uh, I'd like to know um, what turned Jonathan Lewisica's season around. In the second half, uh, he's been very good, and uh, I'd like to know what turned it around. Well, <clears throat> um, he just got off to a little bit of a slow start and then had the shoulder impingement. So once once he got that out of there, um, I, I think he just came back and, and started pitching the way – he's very much capable of you know we saw it all all year last year he was one of the dominant relievers in the league um so you know I think it was kind of a short sample at the start where he was scuffling a little bit um but we also felt like you know it was a matter of time before he would turn that around and then once he got through the injury um you know he really started pitching well for us how good is it how good is it to know that considering all the injuries you got in the bullpen, you can, that's one guy you can rely on. I mean, it's huge. Um, he's he's a great pitcher, um, and, and you know as we've talked about a lot, you know, <clears throat> I know people feel like we have a lot of questions down there. Fair, we don't have the, you know, this guy's the closer in all these certain roles, but I do feel like right now, even though we've we've experienced some attrition down there, that we have a lot of really talented options down there and, and Lowe's right in the middle of that. And and if we're going to get far in this, he's going to have to get a lot of big outs for us. Second row on your right. As a former hitter yourself, when, when there's a pitcher on the mound like Nestor who can disrupt timing, change arm slots within and at bat, how much more difficult does hitting become when you don't know what's coming? Yeah, I mean – I mean that's always the first thing people talk about with Nestor, but I, I I still think that takes away how good a pitcher he is because in reality he does those things as a one off now and then you know he may do that two three four times in a hundred pitch outing whereas the most part he's very traditional and and what he does is he executes his fastball plays up for me as a right handed hitter his ability to cut the ball and really have a real presence on the inside part of the plate, but then, you know, be able to go away and, and, and use both sides of the plate to keep you honest. Um, you know, he'll slow you down with the slider. I feel like his changeup has become a little bit more of a factor as the year has gone on. But, you know, I think Nestor's success is, is more a product of um, stuff and then commanding both sides of the plate and then having – you know, a fearless way about him on the mound. You also mentioned the other day that um, <coughs> you were leaning toward using a three-man starting rotation with the possibility of rain tomorrow. Would that change anything with your plans as far as the starting rotation goes? <coughs> well, if it, I mean, depending on how long the series goes, it would have to, yeah. And the third row on your left. Are you concerned that you may have to play four games in a row, and how would that factor in not only the starting lineup but in the pitching rotation? Well, I mean, it would probably affect the pitching rotation if you went five games and you had to play four in a row, sure. Um, the lineup, no, I mean, we play. It's what you do is, in baseball is you play every day, so shouldn't affect that. Um, you know, that's more who we're going up against, matchups, things like that. Um, but pitching it <coughs> excuse me, could change a little bit what you do. Uh, Brian, up front of your left. <laughs> you talked about the legend of Nasty Nestor a lot this year. I mean, what do you think it is about him that draws the fans to him, that makes him so appealing? Um, I think his personality. Um, he, he looks like you and I. You know, he, you feel like you can relate to him. feel like you could probably do what he does. You can't, but... Um, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I mean, he, in a lot of ways was an underdog, was a com low round pick that wasn't a prospect necessarily. That's kind of found his way to, you know, being an all-star pitcher. Um, so that I think story people can get behind, um, you know, he's, he's got a, a way about him, uh, when he, when he pitches as far as, I think everyone gets that competitive, fearless, he's out there playing a game and having fun like you designed it. Um, he, he he lives that. Um, 
And then I think, you know, I think people then the the little things he does with his delivery from time to time, people can rally around that. So um, I think he's just very relatable. And we'll stay here with Laura. Uh, Nestor said he would be comfortable pitching Friday if there was rain and then even potentially pitching game five. Is that something that you would consider? I would consider him being an option in that kind of scenario. Um, you know, how much you'd have him there. Um, you know, but, but with this team, you know, they're lefties and stuff. Um, you know, for if, if you had him in an inning scenario, a couple inning scenario, um, that would be pretty valuable. But, you know, if he goes Friday, you know, hopefully we're not in a game five situation, but if we are, um, we'll see. I mean, he would maybe be in play, but I wouldn't as a, not necessarily as a traditional starter. First round, you're right. <coughs> Meredith. Kind of to piggyback off of Brian's question, Nestor was in here not too long ago, and he said every time he goes out there, he tries to make it like it's the last time he's going to pitch, approach it like it's the last time he's going to pitch. How do you just kind of describe his demeanor on the mound and that edge that he pitches? <coughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I think he combines all those things as, as far as – you know he's he's had to scratch and crawl, claw for everything he's gotten. He's risen from the ranks of non-prospect to prospect to, you know, when he first started coming up with us, it was, um, you know, kind of on the shuttle, bulk out of the pen, spot start here, and all along the way he's continued to become more and more of a polished, better pitcher. And then I think he he combines that. I'm going to treat this like the last game I may ever pitch. He's competitive as heck, and but he has a lot of fun doing doing what he's doing. And I I think it's a it's a real. I think people can learn a lot from Nestor about the way he goes about things. Like this is a right. This is the highest league in the land. Uh, you know, now you're in the playoffs. You're on the biggest stage, and. He just has a way of, you know, and I think it simplifies it is he's super competitive, but he knows how to have fun playing the game. And and I think sometimes you can lose that fun part of it when uh, when you're playing at this level, and that's important to have. I'll stay there with Eric. Aaron, what does it say about his regular season that he was able to put himself even <coughs> under consideration to start game one? I mean, you know, I, I he was an all-star the whole year, and I think you go back to the second half of last, more than the second half of last year. You know, when he entered the rotation last year, he pitched like an all-star. So this has been, you know, this has been going on for about 16 months now where he's been one of the best pitchers in the league. So, yeah, I mean, he's put himself, you always feel good now about handing the ball to Nestor. And then what are the challenges of facing Bieber? <laughs> um, great command. Um, you know, we've seen his, his fastball velocity tick up a little bit as the season's gone on. You know, he's not necessarily overpowering in that manner, but you watch his delivery and, and his arm stroke, so he creates deception. Um, which which I think allows his stuff to play up, but then, you know, he can really command it at an elite level. So, um, you know, he's one of the best pitchers in the league for a reason, and, and I think it starts with really having elite command. Uh, Bruce? Aaron, what is it like getting the first one? And do you think it sets the tone or can set the tone for a series and even the whole postseason? Well, I mean, you always hope that, um, but, you know, we also, and and whether we won or lost yesterday, you know, we're in the turn the page business. This is, you know, you, you enjoy that. A playoff victory is, you know, a big deal, and especially in game one of a series to grab it is big. Um, but today it's you move on from it, and we got to work out today, and, and now it's on to the next one, and, you know, Series, playoffs, 
can go all sorts of different ways. You try and rack up wins as you can. And Ron will stay there. Ron, you're right. <coughs> uh, Ron. Uh, did you have a chance to review the uh, Donaldson fly ball and your thoughts on the play? Weird play. He thought it went over the fence. We're shaking hands at first. The music goes off. Um, I, I think just a weird play. Any need to discuss? No. no. Okay. In the second row on your left. Um, thinking back to that Oswaldo Cabrera catch last night in the fourth inning, what did you see on that play? Were you expecting him to make it all the way in foul territory with the fans right there like <coughs> that? Yeah, I mean, I, I have the perfect view of that um, play. So I can, you know, down that left field line, I'm right in line from where I stand. So, you know, I'm, I'm as that ball's going up there, I'm with a slice on it. I'm feeling like he's got a chance at this ball. Um Felt like he approached it really well, was very much under control. Then you never know how the crowd comes into play and things like that. So just a really under control play and, you know, more of the same of what we've seen ever since we brought him up. And second row, we'll do two more. Second row on your right, Greg. Just how different of a feel is there this year with the defense that you guys have out there? I know it's been a trend all year, but just pretty staggering from last year to this year, the improvements you guys have made. Yeah, no question. And, and you know, yes, yesterday we get off to a little bit of a slow start. We make an error there in the first inning. Um, and and as that game unfolded, I think you really saw our defense kind of take over and show what they've shown all year. Um, such an important part of the game. You know, J.D. makes a couple good plays over there at third. Rizzo was great all night. You know, obviously the plays in the outfield, um, but that's that's who they are and what we're capable of. And um, you know, if we're going to get to where we want to go, it's going to be an important ingredient. I'll finish up on the third row on your right. Um, before this season, Oswaldo Cabrera had played over 500 minor league games in the infield and had only played one game in left field before you guys called him up. Um, I'm curious. What about him specifically made the organization trust that this 23-year-old kid with almost zero experience in a corner outfield spot would be able to kind of be up to the task in October in Yankee Stadium? Yeah. All right. Well, we love his makeup. So in spring training, we felt like if we ever, you know, if we had a need in that kind of um, utility type guy at any point in the season, even though he hadn't experienced even a ton of triple A yet at that point, just his makeup suggests that, oh, this guy's going to be able to handle this. Then he had injury during the year, so missed some time. And when he came back, he started playing really well. Didn't play a ton of outfield, but did some work out there. So it was a little bit of, let's do it. You know, when he got up here, you know, and the need all of a sudden arose for a right field start. It was like, you know, player development felt like he would be able to handle it. Um, myself and our staff, again, going back to what we think of his makeup, felt like he's not going to be overwhelmed by this, even though it may not be perfect. And, um, you know, he goes out in that first game, I think it's the first or second inning, and robs a home run, makes a great play. I remember going to the foul line and, and is in right field makes a play then the need arose in left field and we're thinking okay it's left field in yankee stadium what's that going to look like and it's been like more of the same like um credit to him you know he's just he's very mature he's a very confident baseball player he works really hard he processes information really well you've seen that i think offensively too I feel like he's made really good adjustments as as these couple months have unfolded. He's just a really good player, and and he plays the game with with a lot of confidence, with a little bit of a swagger to him. Um, and, and he's just he's a really good worker too. Like he he uh, he gets after it, and uh, you know, it's not afraid. No. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I mean, I think one of the one of the things is, you know, because he hasn't played a lot of infield. Like this is a really talented infielder. This guy can defensively pl- really play the infield, all all spots. Um, <clears throat> I think there was some comfort in knowing that he had at least done a fair amount of work in the outfield, even though it wasn't a lot of game reps. Um, and the feeling was that he moves naturally out there and things like that. But yeah, then it was the makeup of saying, let's rip the Band-Aid and put him out there and the rest is history. Aaron, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah.